I've seen a few people on on social media being fairly sniffy about this announcement from Nigel Farage Day. Maybe it doesn't change very much and so on. But for the Brexit party to have performed what can only be described as a gear-crunching U-turn on whether or not on their commitment to, uh, to not standing against the Conservatives. I mean, I, that is a story of significance. It is. Um, I think there are a number of seats which were mm. perhaps vulnerable to the Liberal Democrats uh, in the election, which now will be sort of held up because the Brexit Party voters will vote Conservative. At the same time, there are also many, many seats, about 66, where if there's a swing of more than 5%, the Conservatives would gain them in the Midlands and north of England. So I'm wondering in the next few days, Will Nigel Farage extend his offer and actually move into some other seats as well? Uh, the nominations go in, papers go in on Wednesday and all their candidates have been told not to submit nominations until Wednesday deadline. The majority of people in the country want to have a deal, both Leavers and Remainers alike. The PM's got a deal. And actually it's Nigel Farage who's shifted ground. He was saying before he would only enter any sort of alliance if Boris Johnson went for a no-deal Brexit. Now he's accepting Boris's deal. But not a hard deal. Nobody voted for a hard deal. Nobody was told it would be a hard deal or indeed crashing out. But clearly Johnson has, and there are some rumours knocking around that they had a private meeting last week, uh, Farage and Johnson, and clearly, clearly, uh, you know, kind but of Boris this is, is a signal uh, to the rest of the nation that this is going to be a hard Brexit, not a compromise, no. not a search for the 48% who said no. This is this is absolute, full-on, hard Brexit. Boris's so deal. Nigel Farage has said, yes, thank you very much to Boris Johnson. Boris's deal is for a free trade agreement. That's what everybody on the Leave side voted for in 2016. Well, I don't think you can but say if, that with certain knowledge. But if we, if we, take, oh, Nigel, if we take Nigel Farage at his word, I mean, he said today that this is all about ensuring that Brexit gets done. Well, if he wants that to be the case, then surely one thing he also needs to do is not stand where, you know, in Lib Dem held marginals. Nigel Farage. No, well, the Brexit party. The Brexit party. Yeah, if, if, in, well, in, in Lib Dem held, to, you know, yeah. where they're competing with the Conservatives, sure. southwest yeah. of the country, why is the Brexit party still standing there? Let's see what happens over the next few days. There's some talk that he'll pull candidates from other parts of the country as well. We'll see what happens. There's still three days to go until nominations papers go in. Mm. Part of the problem for the Brexit party is not just that Nigel Farage has performed a U-turn, is that actually, for a lot of people within the Brexit party, Boris Johnson's Conservative leader is quite an attractive prospect. That's very true. There are lots of Brexit Party members and supporters who actually were very big fans of his deal and lots of unhappiness amongst the MEPs in particular when Farage wasn't backing it. Just pick up on one other point. We shouldn't always assume that all of the supporters of the Brexit Party come from the, the right of politics. Of course, yeah. you know, there are many, many people on the Labour side of politics who voted leave in the referendum and they've been supporting the Brexit party. Mm. So for that reason it's quite unclear what those people standing in Labour seats will mean.